I'm Hyphen, nice to meet you. I'm a musician and today I'm going to be talking about things that we can do to make our experience of grief and depression a little bit easier. So how would you describe grief? I think grief is how humans process loss, any significant loss. So that could be a breakup, that could be losing a job, it's most commonly when someone passes away, that's like the most universal experience of loss, like all humans will experience that. To give an analogy with physical health, there's getting sort of knocked in the shoulder and then there's getting absolutely smashed in the shoulder with a baseball bat. They're kind of in the same universe of feelings, but one is significantly more profound than another. And I think grief is that spectrum. So we've all experienced grief in some trivial sense, like a football team losing, whatever you care about. You know, somebody dying is like the, a very, very profound, strong version of that universe of feeling. So I think people are surprisingly familiar with the feelings it is not that dissimilar to things you might have already felt. And can you tell me about a time in your own life where you've experienced grief? When I was 20 or so, uh, a close friend of mine, a guy I went to school with, sadly died by suicide. And then another time, again, also by suicide, but this is much more recently. He was my best friend's brother. We've been living together and I'd known him since he was like very, very young. So again, these are both people who I'd kind of grown up with. That's an incredibly traumatic thing to go through. How, yeah, how did you respond in that first instance? I mean, in no way that was helpful to myself. And now that I think about it, it was a lot of it was based on tropes I'd seen on TV of how I meant to feel. I got really drunk as if that would be a constructive solution. I didn't really have any understanding or guidance on how to do it. No one ever tells you how to do this stuff. You know, back then, probably the discussions around masculinity were a lot less developed. So I was bottling it up. I was punching walls and misinformed, unhelpful stuff. Whereas now when it happened more recently, and this is only, I don't know what, a year or two years ago, you know, I started seeing a therapist again. I kind of took time off work. I did things that were better for me and I kind of had a better understanding of what I need to do. And grief is often linked with depression, understandably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you say during that period of time that you were struggling with depression? The first time, definitely, yes. Like sadness is often a very normal response to a situation, right? Like it makes sense to be sad when someone has died. But there's this kind of normal experience of sadness. And then there's kind of something which is more malign and lasts in ways which are unhealthier, potentially. But then what took that for me into this like much more prolonged, self-destructive unhealthy thing was just the fact that I wasn't looking after myself and I was doing things which were worsening my mental health. I was like smoking a lot. I was constantly hung over. And I was also working this very, very, very intense job. Did no kind of emotional processing of what's gone on. And again, the physical health analogy would be the equivalent of breaking your ankle and then taking no bed rest and then just going for a marathon. Now you're going to be limping for a lot longer now. Yeah. So that, that, that's how it was for me. What are the benefits of actually talking about how you're feeling when it comes to grief? God, so many. I don't even know where to start. Talking about your feelings is giving data points. It's giving lots of data points about what's going on in your head, which allows you to draw patterns. So when you're grieving and you talk to someone about how you're feeling, especially a therapist, it helps you process things. It also helps you talk about and feel things in a judgment-free zone. And it's, often, it's a very strange thing that you can discover things about yourself. And I think that people don't understand that that can happen in therapy, that you can discover something about yourself and a way you behave and a way your emotions work, which you weren't necessarily consciously aware of. Mm -hmm. And when you become aware of it, you're more able to, to deal with it in a constructive way and help yourself heal. Often it can be hard for some people to talk to someone else who's also going through their process of grieving because like, they're also feeling terrible. Having said all of that, I would still encourage you to talk, be open with your family and friends. They may not have the emotional tools to process it and help you deal with it, but still being open about these things that like is always the right way to go. For people who have got friends who are struggling with grief, it can be quite a challenging thing to, to know what to say. I, I just wonder whether you've got any advice to give to people who want to support their friends who are grieving. If somebody has just lost someone, they still often can have functioning conversations. And because we're expecting either that flood of tears 
or you're expecting to say some kind of constructive solution, which obviously you can't because someone's died. There's nothing you can do to fix that. It becomes awkward because you're expecting two things which don't happen. So my advice, if you're around someone who's grieving, let them lead the conversation. Be normal. If you want to have a conversation about football, do it. That's completely fine. Often that's nice. Often you want to have a distraction. If that person feels like they can talk about it and want to talk about what's just happened, they'll do that. Let them lead the conversation. Your job and the thing that you can do as a friend is just make their lives easier. Honestly, bring food. Bring food is like the easiest thing you can do. If you're, if you know, you've got a friend, somebody's just passed away, be like, I've made you three weeks worth of lasagna. Here you go. The last thing you want to do when you're like processing grief is like, oh, I've got to make myself dinner. Someone doing that for you is incredibly helpful. <laughs> you can be doing fine and you can be functioning and you can be walking around school and, and work and smiling and having normal conversations. And still there's this underlying grief mm. going on. And then something triggers those feelings in, in a major way. Mm. I think social media can do this quite often for people, um, you know, whether it's Father's Day, Mother's Day, th things like this, where you're just bombarded with stuff online. How have you personally managed triggers like social media when you're grieving? It's very hard, but it comes back to sort of what I was saying with therapy and just processing your emotions, because you have to have the self-awareness to know what is or isn't going to make you feel a certain way. For example, the friend's brother who I mentioned who passed away, he passed away near Christmas. So he knows Christmas is going to be really hard for him. Going on social media around the time is going to be really hard for him. He has that self-awareness. Like you, you can't stop the world from posting about Father's Day. Like it's just, you can't do that. It's just not re a realistic expectation. In fact, you going online and be like, I hate all these people. That's just going to make you feel worse, like, I can't imagine that as a constructive solution for anyone. But if you have the self-awareness of like, I know what's going to happen, I know I'm going to feel, then, you know, you can kind of do the things that you need to do to avoid that situation, which might trigger you. What are some of the common feelings associated with grief? Disbelief is a big one. It feels like it does take some time before you're like, wow, this has actually happened. And I feel like that's kind of why a lot of rituals around mourning happen. It's like a symbolic marker that this has actually happened and it can actually be quite helpful for that processing to happen i think in the case of suicides which i mentioned to friends yeah i mean I, I can't pretend that anger wasn't a feeling you feel at the time you don't understand things you're everything's so emotionally loaded at the time now i look back on it it's like this isn't something they did it's something that happened to them it's more analogous to like an illness and so on so on so that look things get easier that i don't feel that anger anymore People will draw different conclusions from death and being at funerals. And I think for me, at least, it clarified a lot of things about like what matters. When you're at a funeral, especially for someone young, none of the things you think mattered matter. You think getting a fancy job matters. You think impressing my friends matters, having lots of money, blah, blah, blah. None of those things matter. Why am I doing any of the things that I'm doing? And if I can't really answer that question, then I haven't really learned anything from these experiences. Those are the steps I went, that kind of disbelief, that anger, and then kind of a clarity on like, wait, what am I doing? Like do something that means something. <laughs>